Dishes. Yes, yes, que Carlos Sirtete, which means hello and welcome in Greek to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Do you have zucchini growing in your garden and you don't know what to do with it? Or maybe you bought a whole bunch from the supermarket and now you're left with them sitting in your fridge. You don't want them to go bad. Well, this is the recipe that you're going to want to make. Today we are making zucchini rolls that are going to be filled with spinach and feta. I mean, I cannot get enough of spinach and feta. I think I'll be bringing as many recipes with spinach and feta filling, like a spanakopita filling, until you guys tell me to stop. <laughs> this is delicious, it's easy, it's low carb, feeds a crowd, but also makes great leftovers. So if you're making it for just one or two, that's enough of an intro, let's get started. So I have four zucchinis here and I'm just gonna cut off all of the ends right here, just like that. And I'm gonna get them into thin slices. Now the best and easiest way to do that is with a mandolin. So make sure you use this thing that comes with it to protect your fingers because it's very easy to slice a piece off and don't ask me how I know that. So get all of the slices on a couple of baking trays. I have them on four baking trays here. And then put some olive oil in a little bowl. Brush them all with some olive oil. And season them with some salt and some black pepper. And you want to make sure you do this on both sides. So once the zucchini are all seasoned and oiled and all that, kind, all that good stuff, you want to make sure that your oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit because this is the fastest way to do it and then put them in the oven and let them ro roast in there or bake in there for about 10 minutes. Basically what you're looking for is for them to soften a little bit because we're going to roll them up so that's why we're putting them in there. Plus they're going to release some of that water because zucchini is like 200% water you guys. So you want to get some of that out so that way not only are they easy to roll but also your dish is not going to end up being watery. You could also do this on a grill pan if you really feel like de-stressing, if that's the way you de-stress. You can grill each one or a few at a time on a grill pan. I just find that this is the easiest and quickest way to do it. So that's what I do. I'd rather wash a few extra trays and stand there for three hours um, in front of the grill pan. So once those are done, we're going to move on to the next step. So while the zucchini is baking, we're going to put together the filling, which is so simple and quick and easy to make. So it begins with spinach. We have 10 ounces of baby spinach leaves. Now these come already washed and all that good stuff. And if you want to wash it and dry it one more time, you be my guest and do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and trust that they've been washed well. They look pretty clean to me. And I'm just going to roughly chop these. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to put these back in their container. I'm going to do the same thing with this next batch. So I'm going to put about 3-4 tablespoons of olive oil in this pan that's heating over medium heat. And to that, you can grate in one garlic clove, but I already have grated garlic right here that I like to keep frozen. So I'm going to put, this looks about like about one, and I'm just going to warm it through. It just takes a few seconds to warm through. You're not looking for it to get any color because it's going to continue to cook with all this spinach. At this point, I'm going to add the spinach, all of it at the same time. It looks like a lot, but it's going to wilt down to almost more than half of this, or less than half of this. What's the right word? <laughs> so we're going to cook this until the spinach wilts down and releases most of its moisture. That should take about three to four minutes. So this is what the spinach should look like once it's cooked down. There's just a tiny bit of liquid left. I'm not going to cook it anymore. I'm going to season with a little bit of salt, some freshly cracked black pepper. And now I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to add a teaspoon of dry dill. If you have fresh dill, you can do fresh dill instead. And instead of ricotta this time, I usually put ricotta in my spinach and feta filling, but I really like the way cream cheese tastes because it doesn't release any liquid and it kind of binds everything together. And it, um, then you don't have to add an egg to the filling, which I really like. So I'm going to put the cream cheese in here that's already been sitting out at room temperature just so it can soften a little bit more and sort of melt into this filling so that way it's easier to mix, basically. I'm just going to mash, it, every, mash everything all up. And this part is pretty much done. I'm just going to take this off the burner now. And then the last part of the filling is eight ounces of feta cheese. I like to buy the block because it's so much fresher tasting and way better than the already crumbled up feta. It takes a few seconds to crumble it. Just crumble it up. And anytime I'm baking with feta, I go for the more inexpensive kind. Anytime I'm baking with feta, I, tr I go for the cow's milk variety because it's way cheaper than the sheep's milk. But if you want to add more flavor, go for the sheep's milk. That's fine. Crumble it all up. 
And if you're big on not, you know, dirtying more things, just don't go for the big bowl. You can do everything in the pan. I don't know why I did this actually. I guess it just looks prettier for you guys. So I will wash this extra bowl just for you guys. That's fine with me. And then just mix everything up. This is so good. Let me give it a little taste. Before I do that, I'm going to add my favorite ingredient, these crushed red pepper flakes, just a few in there. You guys can take this mixture right here and fill anything you want in it. You could fill this in roasted red peppers. You could use it as a dip. I mean, this stuff right here is delicious. If you want to take this dip right now and put it in another little container, sprinkle some, not container, a little baking pan, sprinkle some mozzarella cheese or Gruyere cheese, whatever cheese melts well on top, and put it under the broiler for about five minutes or so, just until the whole thing bubbles and nice and hot. It would make the perfect party appetizer. Let's give this a taste, see if it needs more salt. Delicious, perfect, doesn't need anything else. Now we're just gonna roll everything up and put it together. So I have a nine by 13 inch baking pan here that everything is gonna go in and uh, let's get everything organized. I shredded some fresh mozzarella cheese that we're gonna sprinkle on top. I'll move this out of the way. And these came out of the oven. You see how they are? They've released some water. You can definitely pat it off if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it like this, this is fine. They're very pliable, that's how they should be. We're gonna work with one tray at a time. So what you're gonna do is gonna take a tablespoonful of the filling and you're just gonna spread it down the center of the zucchini. And then you're just gonna roll up. Easy peasy. If you want to turn this into a lasagna, you can totally do that so you don't have to roll each one individually. You're just going to layer everything in a pan and put the filling in between the layers, however many layers you want to make, and then you'll, get, then you'll have a low-carb lasagna ready. Before I put it in there, <laughs> my brain isn't working today. I have some store-bought marinara sauce. If you want to wait until the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a homemade tomato sauce for this, but if you have store-bought, it's going to cut this the time in the time, I mean, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to make marinara sauce. Not a lot of time, but if you have a jar, use it. It's going to make life way easier. I'm going to spread it out with this spoon right here. And then you're going to take each roll and you're going to put it on top of the sauce, just like so. And if some of it oozes out, it's no big deal. And as a matter of fact, if you want to make this go a little faster, you can just put the filling on each strip like that and then roll them up in the end and just put them all in the tray together. strips left over. I'm just going to save them for another recipe. I rolled up a few of them because we ran out of the filling. So I rolled them up just into little rolls. They almost look like flowers and I just put them around the edges of the tray. I don't want to overcrowd it any more than I already did. I'm going to take the remaining sauce that I have from the jar and I'm just going to spoon it on top of the zucchini rolls and then I'm going to top them with some shredded mozzarella. Now put as much mozzarella as you want. Who am I to tell you how much you should put on top of here? For, you know what I say, the people that measure how much cheese goes in the dish, just I feel like they really can't be trusted. I don't know. I think you should put as much as you want. The recipes that tell you exactly four ounces or exactly eight ounces, I don't know. Do you ever really follow that? I just put as much as I can on top without making it too cheesy, if you know what I mean. So the oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to bake this on the center rack for about 20, 25 minutes max. Then I'm going to take it out, let it sit at room temperature for about 15, 20 minutes, and then it's going to be ready to serve. So to make the homemade tomato sauce, it couldn't be simpler than this. You're going to finely chop a small onion and you're going to add it to the saucepan with three or four tablespoons of olive oil. And you're going to cook it over medium heat for about eight to 10 minutes or until it's nice and soft. Then I'm going to add a little bit of crushed garlic, just about two cloves is fine. Just let them warm through so that they don't, make sure they don't burn. And then I have a 20 ounce, 28 ounce can, let me get it off the heat, it's bubbling everywhere. A 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I'm also gonna rinse this out with a little bit of water just so that way we don't waste any tomatoes. It's about a half a cup of water and it'll boil away anyway and thicken up. It'll evaporate. 
And then for the seasonings, I'm just going to season with a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and if you want some heat, just a little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes. And I'm going to also add a teaspoon of sugar. You could do honey instead. This, go, this balances out the acidity. And now I'm going to put it back onto the heat, and I'm going to let this cook over medium heat for about 15 minutes or so, or until it's nice and thick. So after about 15 minutes, the sauce will be nice and thick. At this point, you're going to want to just taste it and see if it needs a little bit more salt, pepper, or if it still might need a touch of sugar, which I doubt. A full teaspoon will be more than enough. I would start with actually a half and then taste and see as I go. And then at the end, you can just uh, garnish it with some dried oregano, some basil, or even some parsley. I'm going to use dried oregano. This is Greek oregano, and I'm just going to crush it between my hands to release the oil and all the flavor. Give it a mix, and just like that, tomato sauce is ready with just a few basic ingredients. You can pretty much use this in the zucchini rolls or anything that marinara sauce is needed for. It stays fresh in the refrigerator for a good week or so if it's in an airtight container, and tomato sauce is ready on hand anytime you need it. So you want to make sure that the zucchini sets for a good 15-20 minutes so that way the juices can absorb and that way it's easy to serve. If you go ahead to serve it, if you go and try to serve it right after it comes out of the oven, it is going to appear to be a little watery and it's going to start to just be sad and fall apart on you. I do have some leftover zucchini that you don't have to worry about. We are going to snack on that and it's going to be done by the evening. It is time to take a bite. And Layla's here to do, to do the taste test. I'm going to taste first and she's going to taste second. Mm. So juicy, so fresh, creamy. It has all the flavors in it. All I can say is ba ba ba. <laughs> when something is good in Greek, they say ba ba. Like it's so delicious. That's exactly. That's probably the only way to describe this. Amazing. Lily, you want to take a bite? Yeah. You want the cheesy part? Yeah. Okay. Mmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Two thumbs up. One thumb up. One thumb. Where's the other one? <laughs> two thumbs up from Layla, two thumbs up from me. If you guys want to learn how to make the eggplant version of this, click on this recipe right over here, and I will see you right over there. Yes, us.